In this tutorial we're going to learn how to frame our image with a mount and a wooden frame. For this example I'm going to use this image but I'd like you to open up any flattened high resolution version of an image that you have at home. First thing we do is open our image. If we hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC to duplicate the layer First thing we want to do is go to image, canvas size, and enter an amount of 0.1 centimetres in width, 0.1 centimetres in height. We'll go down to canvas extension colour. Now if you don't have other highlighted, just click on the down arrow, it'll give you the drop down menu. If you click on other, I'm going to use a slightly off white colour a little bit of a grey tone. It's a little trick to use to make sure any whites in the image stand out a little bit more. So if you take the colour picker up to a blue and just move, you see that's a white, just move that down slightly to about there, click OK. Click OK. I just zoom in a little bit and see it's giving us a white, little white edge around the image. The next thing we want to do is flatten the layer. You'll see a reason for this later. So if you go into layer, flatten image, and it'll flatten the layer for you. Now, if you hit Command J on a Mac or Control J on a PC, duplicate the layer, go to image, canvas size, now I'm going to add 10 centimetres on the width and 10 centimetres on the height, making sure relatives ticked. We've already chosen the colour that we want to use, so click OK. Now I'm going to go in and add uh, image canvas size. I'm going to add a little bit more just in the height, so I'm going to add 2 centimetres. Make sure relatives ticked. Now if you click on the up arrow in the middle of the anchor box, click on that and what that's going to do is apply this two centimetres only to the bottom area of the image. We've already chosen our colour, so click OK. The reason behind this is that when you're framing, a picture actually hangs at an angle, so to visually correct the centre, you need to add a little bit more on the bottom. Also, if you're adding a signature in the area down underneath the image, you want to visually correct that as well um, because that will actually make it look like the image is slightly deeper. So that's why we do that. Click on the FX button, which is the second from the left down here in this adjustment panel. Click on the add layer style. We're going to add a drop shadow. Click on drop shadow. Now, if you click anywhere on the image and move it, you'll see that drop shadow coming out. I'm going to add just, just a narrow one. You see, uh, if you have blend mode of multiply, you can play with the opacity to change the depth of the shadow. I like mine about there. Have the angle set at 45. Just, just go in there and set the angle or you can just move the arrow key here. But obviously uh, I like a 45 degree angle. Now the distance in pixels, you can adjust that as you can see. I'll make that quite narrow, about 91 pixels. The spread, if you adjust the spread, you'll see it'll actually expand out a little bit adjust the spread so I'm going to have it about 7% and the size obviously if you move that you'll see you get all different effects it will soften the edges of the shadow and here it's making it quite soft for this example I'm going to leave it about 13 pixels okay all we have to do is click OK and there we have our drop shadow next thing I want to do is add a layer so click on the icon second from the right, down the bottom here in the adjustment panel. 
click on that. And this is where I'm going to use my custom brush signature to add my signature into the image. Okay, making sure opacity and flow is at 100%. I'm just going to close that by clicking on the drop down arrow. Reduce the size of that. I don't want it that big. Just make this image slightly. I position mine about there. Click. And now we've got our signature. What I want you to do is click layer, flatten, image. And we're just going to flatten that layer. At this point, we want to go into image size. We're going to change the width to 2048 pixels. Click OK. OK, we'll just zoom that in so we can see what we're doing. If we double click on the background layer, that will just change it to an unlocked layer. Layer 0, I'm quite happy to name it that. Click OK. We're going to image canvas size. And if we go down to where centimetres is and click on the down arrow, we want to change setting to pixels. Now I'm going to enter an amount of 100 pixels in the width and 100 pixels in the height. Obviously, depending on the size of your image and the look that you want, you're going to maybe have a different size frame. So you can have a fiddle with these pixel sizes until you're happy with the size that you want. Click OK. Next thing we need to do is add a new layer. So if we go to add the new layer icon in the adjustment panel, second from the right, click on that. We've got our new layer. If we go to edit fill and under contents, we want to click on the drop down arrow and choose pattern. Now if we go to custom pattern, click on the drop down arrow and see, I've got a whole heap of different patterns. You may only have a couple. So if you go into the little cog here on the right-hand side and click on that down arrow, you'll see that there's a whole heap of different patterns that you can download and use. The one we want is patterns. So if we click on that, and we want to append to add them to our file, Okay, now you can see that I've just added these ones here. The one we want to use is this one here. It's an orangey one, it's called wood. Click on that and click OK. If we go down to layer zero, click on that. And if we hit command on a Mac or control on a PC, we click on the layer and we're going to load our selection. The next thing we want to do is go to layer one, add a layer mask, and if we hit Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC, that's going to give us our frame. Now I'll just zoom in so you can have a look. You can see it's got a little bit of a wooden texture. See that there. Now what we want to do is add a layer style. So if we go to the FX icon, which is second from the left in the adjustment panel, click on that. First thing we want to do is create a bevel and emboss layer. Now, if we have a look here, we've got style. We want inner bevel selectors. So if you click on the down arrow, you see you've got all these different options, but we want inner bevel. And the same with techniques. If you click on the down arrow, we want to have chisel hard highlighted. Click on that. Now, if you move the depth, I'm just going to zoom in so you can actually see this frame. There we go. Okay, now if I move the depth, you can see, see how that edge over here changes. It's quite dark, it's quite light. I'm going to set it back at 126% because I quite like that amount of shadow. If we go down to highlight mode, this is going to adjust our highlights. If you just have a look, 
just have a look in this area here. If we slide that up, it gets quite light. Slide it down, it's almost non-existent. It is non-existent. So I'm going to do it at about 91%, or thereabouts, 90%. Now, if we go down to our shadows, once again, I'm making sure you've got multiply selected. We can adjust the opacity, and if you have a look over here at the shadow, just set opacity to its non-existent. Now, we can either have it around about the same setting as what the highlights were, or probably slightly less. I quite like it about there. And the next thing we want to do is, I really don't like the colour of this frame. It doesn't work with my image. so. I want to change the colour, so if we click on colour overlay, <laughs> frightening uh, colour that one is, double click on that, and if we go into blend mode, I want to change my blend mode from colour burn, which is going to change the tints of your timber, I want to change mine to colour. If we click on this colour box here, we can adjust the colour of our frame. If you have a look over here, you can see the colour changes. I want something quite kind of muted. But you can see this colour is sort of showing in this image here. So I'm quite happy with that. When you've picked a colour that you quite like the look of, just click OK. Click OK. Look at that. Beautiful. What we want to do now is go to layer zero. We're going to give this a little bit more dimensionality. So what you need to do is go to the layer style icon, which is the FX icon in the adjustment panel at the bottom, second from the left, click on that, go to inner shadow, okay, I'll just move this so you can see, see that shadow there, obviously that's pretty uh, heavy and I don't want something like that, so I'm going to reduce the pixels till I'm happy with it, say about 38%, if we go to the opacity, uh, blend mode on multiply and if we just reduce that opacity down to make that shadow a little bit softer. Just gives just something quite subtle and reduce the size of it a bit more. Maybe about 18, 20 pixels. Just adjust the distance a little bit. Just have a fiddle with those settings. Once you're happy, just click OK. Look at that. You can see that uh, it's created a greater sense of depth and dimensionality in that frame, makes it look quite realistic. Just go back and have a look at my other version, which is slightly different, but that's okay because obviously uh, it shows a different coloured frame and a bit of a softer kind of look, but you know, quite both of them are quite um, acceptable. They both look like real frames. Okay, what that's left now to do is to save your image. So we originally changed the image size to 2048 pixels because we've added a frame to our image. It's obviously grown the size of the image. So just make note of that before you're saving if you're planning on saving to the web. If we go to image size, and change that width setting to 2048. Click OK. We'll just uh, sharpen our image a little bit. Go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. With the amount of 500%, radius of 0.2 pixels and a threshold of zero. Click OK. We want to save it as an RGB file. So if we go to Edit, Convert to Profile, on that. Making sure sRGB is the profile under destination space. If you click on the down arrow and you can choose uh, sRGB. Adobe ACE Engine, Intent Relative Color Metric, particularly use black point conversation and the flatten image to preserve appearance boxes. Leave dither unchecked. Click OK. And all that's left to do now is save it as a JPEG. File save as. I just go into my file name and change the flatten high res to web 
frame, shade it to a JPEG, click on save. I've already named this before, so I'm going to go in and replace that. Quality of 12. Click OK. And there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial creating a frame. I hope you have lots of fun creating all different kinds of frames to suit your images. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.